Hello and welcome to the Lab Report. Learning science can be really fun, but you got to know what the heck you're doing. Learning science can be easily explained, but you got to know all the theories. Lab Report. Lab Report. Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Steven Yehelka and this is the Lab Report. Today we're going to be learning about water. How convenient is it that if I ever needed fresh water to clean with, cook with, or even drink, I got a water speaker right here and at the flip of a knob, there it is. Now, water around these parts can vary from source to source. If you're on a well, well, you might want to know the mineral content of your water. You're absolutely right, cowboy. In fact, in most water sources, whether it be well or city water, you're going to find a low concentration of different alkali earth metals. And, well, it's important to know whether these are harmful or not. As well, you may want to know the amount that's in your water. The concentration. And this is what we refer to as the hardness of water. Or hard water. Hard water. Tonight is very exclusive on Fox News at 9. Is your water killing you? Find out tonight. Whoa now. Before you go contacting your attorney to file a class action lawsuit, it's important that we know a little bit more about the specifics of hard water. Now, when we're talking about the hardness of water, we're referring to two specific alkali earth metals, one being calcium, the other magnesium. Now, both of these are found in many of the different types of food that you eat and supplements that you take to help keep you healthy. Now, calcium, found in milk, helps you to support a really strong bone structure. And well, magnesium acts as a cofactor in many different proteins in your body. Oh man. If only this water wasn't so hard. I gotta scrub this thing forever. I can't get rid of that stain. Well, of course, there's got to be a downside. With calcium and magnesium ions in your water at high concentrations, these could leave nasty residues in your sink or tub that are really hard to get off. It can also cause damage to water pipes and appliances. Things like coffee makers don't stand a chance. Are you sick and tired of your water pipes that are leaking because of hot water damage? Well, I know it's true because there's residue that's sticking to your sink like glue. Well, I got a solution for you. Call the hard water doctor. The hard water doctor. Yikes. Well, if you'd rather avoid a house call from the water doctor, I highly suggest that you test your water supply. Now, the hardness of water can be measured in something called parts per million, which is equal to one milligram per liter. Now, this can range from anywhere from about 100 parts per million to about 300 on the high end. And at 300 parts per million, well, you're dealing with some pretty hard water. And that's going to be where you start to see buildup and uh, your aerators and all the different appliances that you use at home. On the other end, though, if it gets lower than about 60 parts per million, then it can cause corrosion in your pipes, and that can be bad too. So there's got to be a happy medium, and it, wouldn't it be nice to actually know that number? So, how do we do this? Titrations. Titrations, yeah! So, what are titrations anyways? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Well, in chemistry, titrations are a great way for us to experimentally determine the unknown concentration of a substance in its solution and we do this by reacting it with a known 
concentration of something it will react with. And by measuring the amount of that known concentration it takes for that reaction to be complete, we can actually determine the concentration of the unknown. That's simple. But really it's not. So titrations are really concerned with only, well, two variables in this case. We got concentration marked with M and volume marked with V. And if our reactants are reacting at a one-to-one -one ratio, then the relationship between the two solutions, pretty simple. We have the concentration times the volume of solution one equaling the concentration and volume of solution two. Now say we wanted to know the concentration of solution one, but we knew the concentration of solution two. And we set the volume of solution one to react with our second solution. Now all we would have to do is measure the amount of volume that it takes of solution two to fully react with solution one. And that would result in our concentration. Okay, and then it is time to titrate. I mean, you use this thing called a burette. This is a way that we can accurately measure the amount of our known concentrated solution that it takes to fully react with our unknown concentration. So knowing the volume and the known concentration that it takes to react with an unknown concentration with a known volume, we can calculate the unknown concentration. But we need to know when the reaction is complete. So we use an indicator solution. Now, we know that the reaction, when completed, will have a change in pH, its acidity. And using an indicator solution, this will cause a change in color from red to blue. As we start to reach the end of our reaction, the end point, we are getting closer and closer to the desired color that we want in our indicator solution. And so we slow the pace at which we are adding the titrant. And once we are pleased with the colors that match with our blank, we know that we have an accurate measurement. And now for the results. We were able to determine that the average hardness of water at the Ukiah campus of Mendocino College was a measurement of 734 parts per million, which to me seems a little bit high. This just in, college student Stevie Helka causes widespread panic among students of Mendocino College for his lab results, indicating high concentrations of magnesium and calcium in your water supply. More on this at 9. In order to verify our results, we may want to check with other students who may have uh, followed the same experimental procedure, uh, rerun the calculations, and if needed, run a couple more trials. And I hope this video helped you understand the hardness of water and how you can experimentally determine how hard your water is. And that, my friends, is the lab report. Lab report. <laughs>